Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Levitation Masters of Magic. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to the 19th century. The world has gone cuckoo for magic and we are young magicians trying to learn our craft and make a few points along the way. And I'm going to show you how we're saying a two-player run-through. I am the green player. Jen is the purple player. Each of us starts with two acclaim, these little uh, cubes here. And um, the board has been set up with 15 different tricks that we could potentially learn, drawn from a deck, and there's a whole bunch more that we might come across over the course of the game. And we have also rolled 20 dice and divided them amongst the three most famous American magicians of the day, Alexander Herman, who gets all the ones and twos, Howard uh, Thurston, who gets the threes and fours, and Harry Keller, who gets it's the fives and sixes. Although I should say, folks, this is a prototype. The real version of the game is going to come with custom dice, where instead of threes and fours, ones and twos, and fives and sixes, there's going to be actual little icons that tell you which section they go in that makes it a little bit more thematic. Like I said, I got a prototype. And um, so, the game is set up. We are ready to go. We're going to be playing over 12 rounds, or 12 turns over three rounds, I suppose. And um, we are here on turn one. And so, let's get going. Now, first of all, at the beginning of every turn, we have to figure out turn order. And the way that works is each player grabs one of these tokens randomly. They're all numbered one to four. Each player has a set. And so I grabbed a two, and Jen grabs a two. Okay, it's a tie. How will the tie break? Well, Jen's two has a little five on it. Mine has a four, so the tie broke in my favor. I will be the first player on this first turn. Okay, and then Jen will be the second. And then, of course, we've got our um, ones and threes and fours still waiting for turns two, three, and four of the first round. Okay, so I will be the first to draft a die from Alexander, Howard, or Harry. And really, it makes sense to start out coming over here to Howard because drafting from him means I can learn any one of these tricks. And I'm not going to be a very good magician if I don't learn some tricks. So, uh, since I'm going to draft from him, I can either take a red, a yellow, or a green die. And that means I can learn a red, a yellow, or a green trick. You can see, going a little bit closer, all these tricks have a bit of information on it. First of all, how much acclaim it costs to perform the trick, what the size of the trick is, what its components are. In this case, there's camouflage and technology for the Mask of Balsamo. What the special effect is when I perform the trick, how much flair can be associated with the trick, and a little bit of historical flavor of what the trick actually was. Uh, not spoiling anything, of course, just, you know, what, the, uh, what it was. So, I could draft a red trick, which is camouflage based, a yellow, which is sleight of hand based, or a green, because these are the green dies. And which one do I want? Oh, okay. I like me some magic flowers. I am totally going to learn this one, which uh, means I could have learned this by either drafting a blue or a yellow die from Howard. There was a yellow die. So, okay, here's my first turn. I'm going to grab a yellow die. That means I can learn a yellow sleight of hand trick. I have learned this one. And in the process, I have opened up the city of Mumbai, which is now a place that we can go and perform to get more acclaim. And that might be something Jen decides to do on her turn, or I might do, because the more acclaim, the better. Uh, these acclaim cubes are effectively kind of like workers in a worker placement game. So the more you've got, the better. And now there is one city ready to have a performance, and it'll generate two acclaim. All right. So, that was the main portion of my turn. I'm going to draw, I'm going to draft a die to do the effect. Either learn a trick, which is what you saw me do, or increase my connections, or use those connections to book gigs. It's either uh, get connections, uh, spend those connections to book gigs, or learn another trick. I learned a trick. But my turn isn't over, because in addition to the core action I can do, if I have any tricks that are a color that matches the die I drafted, I can spend my acclaim to perform those tricks. I guess you can kind of consider it practicing. So I'm going to do that right now. The magic flowers, um, which, if again, if I drafted a yellow or a blue die, I get to perform this. It takes two acclaim, so I will spend both of my starting acclaim to do this. And this says, hey, my reward, I get a third acclaim. Alrighty. Boom. 
And now, if I had a trick that I could cast with a single acclaim, that is a yellow base trick that had a single, I could do that trick right now too. But as it is, my turn is now over. And my acclaim comes back, so I'll have it for the next turn. Okay, I am done. It is now Jen's turn because she drew the short straw. And really, it makes a lot of sense for Jen to come over here and grab a, a trick as well. Uh, you don't have to. Jen could instead come over and draft any one of these dice specifically to um, get these three ticket tokens, which, like I said, represent your contacts in the entertainment industry because you use these to book gigs or to lock in in-game scoring bonuses. And by the way, these are lovely, heavy uh, poker chips. The real game, they're not going to be poker chips. This is another thing for the prototype. You can hit that eye in the top right corner screen to see what the uh, real game will look like. But So Jen could come over here, get three tickets. Um, she could come over here to spend a ticket, but she doesn't have any, so that makes no sense. Chances are she's going to draft a die and learn a trick as well. Which means uh, it could be a yellow, a green, or a red, and she's got to figure out which of these remaining tricks. Because you notice, Mumbai did not refill. What trick does Jen want? Jen does love, does love the cone of flowers because the effect of this trick is to change the color of the die you drafted. So if you uh, draft a yellow die, that means you are limited to a yellow effect. But um, the yellow effect could be to power to, to do this trick, which could then change your die to a different color. And that could be super useful. Super duper useful. But you know what else could be useful? The egg and the handkerchief, which Jen could get either with a yellow or a blue. Although right now, there's only, I mean, there are no blue. So if Jen wants this, she'll need to get a yellow die, which is available. I think, yeah, this is the one Jen's going to take. So she's a maid of Philadelphia available as another city where we could put on performances. Jen gets this. To get it, She so her first thing is she drafted the last yellow die for Howard Thurston. Because it was a yellow, she could have taken this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Any of these tricks that required um, sleight of hand, yellow, Jen could have took. She took this one, and this one, like mine, requires to acclaim, which we start with. Jen will do that, and that gives her one ticket. Just like that. And so now Jen, she didn't have to spend an entire turn. And we only get 12 turns in this game. Coming over here to get a ticket, Jen just got a ticket right off the bat. And that's going to come in handy for her. Okay, so we have finished turn number one. We are now moving on to turn number two. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, this round marker is just the uh, coolest thing, uh, probably the coolest one I've ever seen, uh, because it's a little magic trick of itself. Hey, he's like, hey, here's the red ball. Do I need the red ball? No, I don't need the red ball for a turn order marker. Totally not necessary. But the red ball is still here! What the heck? And no, it's gone! Oh my goodness. So just a little bit of magic uh, you can use to entertain your fellow players. Anyway, though, so we are moving on to round two. And we again are going to, we don't put these back. Uh, Jen it pulls her three. I pull a four. Jen's going to be first. She gets two turns in a row. Okay, so what is she going to do? And there's still plenty of dice here to draft. And, uh, and she knows she's going to get another ticket. You know what? Yeah. Okay, well, I think she wants to get another trick. Uh, because the more tricks we have, the better. So, um, although, here's the thing. Because Jen has a ticket, she could dr go to Harry Keller. Coming here means if you have tickets, you can spend them to either lock in in-game scoring bonuses or to put on a performance in a city that matches the color. If Jen drafts one of these blue dice from Harry, she could put on a performance in Mumbai. Even if you don't have any tricks, you can still put on a performance. I guess it's just not very magical. Or if Jen drafts one of these yellow dice, she could put a trick in Philadelphia. If she does this in Philadelphia, her... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's a black die over here. If she puts on a trick in Philadelphia, a performance, she will get two flair. If she comes over here to Mumbai, she'll get two acclaim. I think Jen would like that. Because Jen got this ticket. So Jen, instead of learning another trick, Jen is going to grab one of these blue dice. Okay. And so that means she is going to put this ticket out somewhere in the world. Now, this uh, egg and uh, kerchief trick is the smallest trick possible, represented by this mouse. Which means Jen could uh, go on ahead 
and put this over here, which means she can potentially score bonus points at the end of the game for every tiny, small-scale trick. And there are plenty more of them out here. There's, uh, oh, this one, the, the animated mouse, and the, actually, oh, there aren't very many of them right now, but more of them will come out over the course of the game. Or Jen could try to say, hey, you know what? She wants mastery of sleight of hand or mechanical tricks. So she could lock this in or this in. Once somebody takes these, they will score bonus points at the end of the game, depending on whether they've gotten one, two, three, or four of the type of trick or the size of trick. Or Jen could come over here and say, you know what? The more tickets she has at the end of the game, the more points. Or the more claim, the more points. Because nothing's worth any points at the end of the game uh, unless you lock these in. So Jen could, uh, you know, she could use her ticket for any of those, but instead she's going to put on a performance in Mumbai, which means she immediately gets two more acclaim. And that's important because a lot of these tricks require four, three acclaim uh, to be able to pull off. And so learning this trick doesn't do you any good if you don't have enough claim to do it. So Jen came here to Mumbai, she put on a show, and her reward was two. Count them, two more claim. And Jen's not over, done yet, because remember, she drafted a blue die. And remember, the egg and kerchief is a yellow slash blue. So because she drafted a blue die, she can activate this again by spending two, uh, what do you call it, two acclaim to get another ticket. Just like that. Boom. Which means, uh, next turn, Jen, if she drafts a yellow die, might put on a performance in Philadelphia, or might lock these things in. And, I mean, this is very useful for her, because me, if I want to start doing this stuff, I have to spend a whole turn, one of my 12 turns, uh, getting three tickets at a time. Jen's just getting them passively. But hey, I'm earning passive acclaim, so that's going to work out pretty well for me, too. So, that was Jen's turn, and now it is my turn. And what, what, what did he, what am I going to do? So, um, I, well, you know, the fact that I'm already earning a claim means I should probably get another trick as fast as I can, because the more claim I have, the more tricks I can do. So, mm, oh, I kind of like that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Or do I? I mean, a lot of options. And there's a lot to consider here. Ideally, I would like to get another trick that is triggered by blue or yellow dice. Because that means on a future turn, when I draft a blue or yellow die, I could do both of these tricks at once. Another thing is, if I want to be able to do my magic flowers this turn, I need to draft a blue or a yellow die. Now, I've got a problem. There are no blue or yellow dice here. I, if I want to learn more tricks, I cannot do the magic flowers. If I want to do the magic flowers to get more acclaim, I got to come over here to Alexander to draft a blue die over here to Harry. But Harry is no good because I won't actually get to do the core action because I don't have any tickets. Yikes! Oh, that's kind of scary. Yeah. You know what? I think I think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put my uh, trick learning on hold for a little bit because of the way these dice came out. I am gonna go to Alexander. And I will draft a blue die. And because I've done this, I get three tickets, which means I could start putting on performances or locking in victory point stuff like Jen. One, two, three. And um, because I drafted a blue die, I can activate my blue trick and get myself some more claim. So I'm building up a claim to have multiple tricks. All right. So that was um, my turn. And we move on to turn three. Um, which, by the way, I mean, you could use this to keep track. What actually Jen and I do, we just put the little tokens on the spaces. There's plenty of ways you could keep track. Uh, but anyway, so we're on to round three. Once again, we got to find out who's first. And it's a one versus a four. I'm going to be first this time. So I'm taking two turns in a row again. So now that I've got this, I could come over to Philly and do uh, and, and earn some, oh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, flare. That'd be pretty nice. To be able to do this, I'd have to draft a black die, and then I could come over here. Um, right. But no, I think I'm going to go back to school. I got some tickets last time. I think I'm going to come back to Howard and learn another trick. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm paying a bit more attention. There's a bunch of tricks out here. I'm kind of drawn to the Midnight Mystery. Because to get it, I would need to draft a blue or a uh, green die. So I'm going to draft a green from Howard. Boom. So this is my new die that I've drafted, which means I can activate green tricks. Unfortunately, that means my magic flowers are going to be put on hold for a round, sadly. But I've got this, 
And I can activate this trick now. And interestingly, it requires three acclaim, which I have because I've been building my acclaim up. And my reward, I get to immediately draft a blue trick from anywhere on the board for free. So that's pretty handy. And um, that means in the future rounds, if I use blue dice, I could activate all three of these. Because this could be activated by blue, this could be activated by blue, and I'm going to get myself another blue trick. Nice. Which blue trick? And here's the interesting thing. If I can get a blue-green trick, like this levitation, I could activate it right now with my green. Although, I've only got one acclaim left. So I can't... Right. Is there anything I could draft that's a blue that only takes one acclaim? Nope, this is a, a black and a red. And, um, oh. Oh. I could actually learn the animated mouse. This is a blue. I could even do it right now. But the problem is, I won't get much out of it. Uh, oh, wait. Will I? Yes, I will. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I am. I activated the Midnight Mystery, which let me learn another blue, uh, which is going to be the animated mouse. And the animated mouse can be activated. Oh, shoot. I can't activate it right now because it doesn't have a green. But this is going to be handy anyway. I can now activate all of these if I draft a blue card. Um, and this says, hey, score point for every sleight of hand trick I've got. And I've got two. So every time I activate this, I score two points. Every time I activate this. So I can activate all of these off of a single blue. And I definitely want to start drafting blue dice like crazy so I could run them all. All right, but anyway, that was it for my turn. Uh, that was pretty nice. And now it is Jen's turn. And what is she going to do? Well, uh, either before or after you draft, you can do your tricks. Jen's going to do her trick to give herself another ticket. So does she want to go out and put on a performance here in Philadelphia? Maybe she does. In fact, actually, you know what? She's not going to do this right away. Jen, first of all, is going to draft the only black... Oh, shoot. Here's the deal. Jen wants to put on a performance in Philadelphia because she will get two flair as her reward. And to Philadelphia, she needs a black die. The problem is, this black die won't let her activate her egg and cat because she needs to draft a yellow or a blue die for that. So that's kind of a bummer. Oh. But you know what Jen could do? You know what Jen would like very much to do? is um, learn the Cone of Flowers, because this lets you change the color of the die you draft. So that you could draft a, a die to maybe activate some stuff, but then change its color to do different things. That's very cool. But this needs a yellow. Right now, all we can learn are red and green tricks. So, But really, Jen would like to learn a yellow or a blue so she can do her egg and kerchief again. You know, I think she's going to put her tricks on hold for a bit. I mean, I'm learning a bunch of tricks. She's fine with just her egg and handkerchief. I think Jen, because she's still got these tickets, she's going to go on ahead over here to Harry and draft a yellow, because that means she'll be able to activate this. And that means she could visit a yellow city, Calcutta. Boom. And she gets two flare. And that's these yellow tokens over here. Now, these flare are at the very least worth one point. But if you can put them, if you can apply them to existing tricks, they can be worth so much more. Jen, now, her egg and kerchief is a simple trick. It can only uh, absorb one flare. But now that there's some flare, Jen can pull this off with uh, style and panache. She gets an extra point every time she does this trick. Although she cannot put any more flair on there. Since the she doesn't have any other tricks to put this one on, she just discards it and scores one victory point. Um, right. So the, she came here. She got two flair. And because she drafted a yellow, she can now activate the handkerchief again, which she will spend two on, which now gives her a point every time she activates this. And it gives her another ticket. Nice. Okay, Jen's pretty happy about that. That was like this little one, two, three. And so now she's got a thing that is letting her um, you know, tour the world while not having to waste time uh, making business connections. And she's got something else up her sleeve as well. Jen now has two performances she's put on. And there is a route building element of this game. If Jen could, now that she's been in Mumbai and Calcutta, if she could put on a show in either Istanbul or 
Paris, either one of these, she will have made a line from the top to the bottom of the board. And whenever you make a full route like that, they don't have to be straight. They could be, um, you know, either orthogonally adjacent or diagonal. So Jen could go like, she could go one, two, three, or one, two, three, or one, two, three, uh, or whatever. You immediately score the points of the bottom city. So Jen could get nine points if she does a show with her little um, egg and handkerchief in Paris. And um, that could be a pretty big deal. Or uh, if she comes over here to Istanbul, she could get eight points. So that might be what she's thinking. But the problem is she can't put on a performance in either of these towns until somebody learns the cone of flowers or the apple and knife pin. So that's something for her to think about later. But Jen is eyeing trying to have a full tour. She's done two stops of her tour. If she can do one more, she'll get a bunch of points. Okay. So, that was her turn, and we are on the last turn. I pull a three, Jen pulls a one. She's going to go again. Okay. And, so Jen is thinking it would be nice to get these out of the way. This needs a yellow. We cannot learn any yellow. This needs a yellow or a blue. We cannot learn any yellow or blue. Ah, Drat. That's kind of a problem. That is a problem. So what could Jen do instead? Right now, the only um, tricks we can learn are green and red. Green and red. Is she going to... Although, if she learns a green and red trick, she will not get to score a point and get more tickets. Huh. Is there any green or red she would like? Uh, so the Mask of Balsamo is a simple one. You get a ticket for every red die that has already been drafted. And so far, none of them have. If Jen takes a red to get this, she would then be able to activate this. And But the problem is, these colors don't match her existing colors. So with she can't activate both. She'd like, is there any red, yellow... Or, you know, red or green, yellow, blues that she could find. There's this decapitation. Ooh. Which is an interesting one. Every time you activate this trick, which takes two acclaim, you get to swap city tickets with somebody else. So Jen's already got two. If I already had one out here on the board, Jen could activate this and swap positions with me and then get the bonus of the new city. So that's really cool. If I start putting on performances, and so far I haven't put any on yet, so currently that has no particular benefit whatsoever. Hmm. Let's see here. I think Jen's going to mix it up a bit. She's going to go on ahead and draft a red, which sadly means she will not be able to activate this, which is a bummer because she just made this more valuable because of all her flair. But she's going to take a red, but she's learning a red trick. She's going to learn the Stella which is a very special one. This is the only card, I believe, in the game that you can actually activate it before you choose your die. Because what this does is, at the start of your turn, you can activate this, and it forces all the dice to be re-rolled. And so if Jen does not like the layout, the color uh, distribution of dice, she can change it. So, anyway... So Jen has just learned a new trick, thereby opening up Naples, another place that we can put on performances if you have a blue die. And with this red die, Jen can't activate this, but she can activate that. However, um, this has to be done before. So right now, Jen's whole turn was just learning this trick and nothing else. But on, starting on her next turn, she can use this to change things. All right, so that was it for the first. We move now on to round two. And so we take all these, we shuffle them up again. And, uh, let's see, Jen is going to be a uh, 3, and I'm going to be a uh, 1, so I'm going to go first. All righty, all righty, righty. So, what am I going to do? Let's see. I would like to uh, get a blue die so I can activate all my stuff. And Jen just opened up a new, a blue city that we could perform in. And I've got tickets. So yeah, I'm going to go on ahead and visit Harry and take the last blue die that's over there. And that means either before or after I do the main action, I can activate any blue trick. I'm going to do the main thing first, which is visit Naples, which gives me one, two, more acclaim. And now all three of my tricks are blue. Let's do them all. Let's do the magic flowers. I spend two. To get one more. I spend um, three to, uh, and I could do these in any order by the way, to give myself another blue base trick, which I, I could then potentially do. What other blue tricks are there out here? Ooh. Oh, hold on a second. I might do this in a different order. 
So let's say I haven't done that yet, which means I haven't earned one. So I've just got these. If I do this first, and I say learn levitation. Oh, this is interesting. Jen's hoping I take this one, the apple and nine pin, because then that opens up her chance of doing a performance in Paris. And I know that opens up her chance to do a performance in Paris, so you better believe I'm not going to take that one. Although Jen has a problem anyway, she would need to be able to draft a red die, and there aren't any red dice to be able to visit Paris. So, I mean, anyway, even so, I'm not going to open that up for her because she's done all this. I am going to take Levitation, um, because I'm thinking, hey, I've started up here. If I could go from here to, to any of these three cities and down to Beijing, I will have done a full circuit, and I can score nine points. So... First of all, I act, first of all, I did my blue action. I went to Naples, got some more acclaim. Then I did the Midnight Mystery that let me learn another one. Now, for my other three, I'm going to do Levitation that says, Hey, earn a flare. And I will put the flare on my Magic Flowers, which I normally love to do. So I'll start scoring points as I generate more acclaim for myself. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. And it is Jen's turn now. And remember, Stella was unique. Before Jen chooses a die, she could re-roll everything. Now, what normally happens, if Stella hasn't come out, if nobody's learned Stella, we keep going like this, drafting dice, until all the dice have been taken out of one of the depots. And then at that point, as soon as there's an empty depot, the next player's turn, all the dice are collected. The ones that remain and the ones that have already been drafted and get re-rolled and refresh. So sooner or later, we were going to get some new dice coming out as soon as these four got taken or these five got taken or these three got taken. But Jen, she's going to use Stella. She's going to use one of her claim and start it sooner. And that means she will get first dibs on whatever new dice come out. Whoa! Alrighty, and there's a 1, and a 2, and a 1, and a 1, and a 1, and a 5, and a 6, and a 3, and two fives and a 6, and a 5, and a... And you get the idea. This, of course, is much quicker with uh, multiple players helping. So, wow, there are a lot of dice that have to do with putting on shows or locking in victory points. It's a good thing Jen's got a ticket. So, she just did Stella, and I think she would like to... Um, Remember how badly she wanted to learn the Cone of Flowers because it lets her change dice? Oh, this one's not bad either. This, you know, one I was just looking at myself, uh, when you activate it, you get a point for every blue die that is already drafted. So if Jen uses a blue die, or I'm sorry, no, uh, learns a trick, uses the only blue die. Wow, only one blue die. Yeah, I think Jen will take advantage of that. She's going to learn this trick. Um, or so she's learning a blue trick. She likes the apple and nine pin because she's planning on putting on a show here, which will score her um, uh, well more points, uh, nine points instead of eight points in Istanbul. All right, so she's gotten that, and because she drafted a blue die, she can activate her blue uh, tricks. Two over here to the egg and kerchief, which gets her another point because of her flare, and one over here to the apple and nine pin, which gets her. One point, because one blue die has been drafted. And now Jen wants these other blue dice drafted as fast as possible, because the more blue dice that are, have been drafted, the more powerful this becomes, until they all get rolled and put back down here. So, that was it. Jen used all of her claim to activate all of her tricks. And the door to Paris is now open. And, um, right, we move on to round two. And we see who's first. Uh, Alright, oh, it's a, it's a tie. But the tie breaks in my favor. I will go before Jen. All righty. Boop. And now here's the deal. If I don't go put on a performance here in Paris, which I can do right now, I could draft one of these red and get down here. This will get me nothing. Um, and in fact, actually, that's not true. In the first round of turns, only one player per city. But once we get to the second round, two players per city. And in the final round, when people are trying to put on lots of shows, three players per city. So I can't block her out of here. Jen is going to score these nine points. I know it. Um, but hey, there's a whole bunch of new dice. Uh, and ideally, I'd like to do a blue so I can activate all of my stuff because there's a common thread. But if I want to... The only blue die is over here. So I think, yeah... I'm going to go to put on a show. I'm going to put on a show someplace, for sure, so I can activate all my blue powers. So, um, and 
Where am I going to go? Well, I could put on this show in Beijing, which will do nothing for me. But remember, once I put on a show here in Philadelphia, I will have done a complete tour and I'll score nine points. So I could do that. But we haven't been paying attention. There's only 12 turns in this game. It might be time to start thinking about locking in in-game bonus points. All right, so right now I've got two tricks. Let's go ahead and look a bit more closely at my um, sheet. I've got two medium-sized tricks that are represented by the horse. One super small one and um, one... Uh, uh, or actually, no, the horse is kind of large. The dog is medium. So, I've also got four tricks. I know four mechanical tricks. It might make sense for me right now, before Jen does it, because she knows a couple of mechanical tricks too. If I say I'm taking this blue... So far, you've just I could come over here to Beijing and I get nothing for it immediately. Um, but instead, I am going to say I am the master of blue mechanical tricks. And because I have locked that in, nobody else can claim that spot. And at the end of the game, I get 10 points if I know four tricks. If I only knew three tricks, I'd get six points. I know four mechanical tricks, so I just locked in 10 points just like that. And because I drafted a blue, I get to activate everything. Let's go on ahead and act, do two to get another one and score a point. And then let's go on ahead and get... Oh, but I've only, I've only got two left. Shoot. So I could do three to get another blue or three. I'm going to come over here to get three to get some more flare. Now, I can't put any more flare on my magic power, but I can put it over here. So now I want to keep doing these because I score a point every time I do them. And then I've got two more, which means I will... Ugh, shoot. Well, I can't do this because I need three. I could do this. This says... Oh, wait, no, no, this isn't bad. So, the way this works is I get a point for every sleight of hand trick that I know. And I know one, two sleight of hand tricks. But there's a little bit more trickiness to this. The way this works is, it says right here, it says I have to pay... Um, what do you call it? The uh, acclaim cubes equal to the number of points I want to score. Normally, the cards just flat out say, look, you have to pay one, two, or three cubes. But this one says, if I want to score the two points I've got coming to me, because I know two sleight of hand tricks, I need to pay two cubes. It just so happens I've got two, which I will pay, and boom, I've just caught up to Jen on scoring. And I did not use my Midnight Mystery. I need some more acclaim so I can run all of this stuff. But that was pretty good. I've caught up with Jen. But more importantly, I've just cemented 10 points for me right there. So, um, that was my turn. Now it is Jen's turn. And what is she going to do? I think Jen would like to visit Paris. Um, the problem with drafting a red die being, of course, she won't. she has no... Why did she go to Paris? Oh, because it was worth another point. If she drafts a red die to come to Paris, she won't be able to activate any tricks. Because Stella, well, it is a red trick, but you don't need any colors because you do this before rolling. I think Jen would like to learn a red trick first. But she can't learn any red tricks. Right, Jen, she's put this off long enough. She wants the Cone of Flowers. Jen is going to get a draft of yellow to learn the Cone of Flowers. Okay, so now Jen has two yellow tricks, and Istanbul is now a place that we can perform. And uh, because she drafted a yellow, she could activate... Oh, no, she has three. She could activate all three of these, although she only has four acclaim. So, what does she want to do? Okay, so the apple and nine pin, if we come and look a bit more closely at what she's got, for only one acclaim, she gets a point for every drafted blue die. Both Jen and I have drafted a blue die now. So for one um, acclaim, she can get two points. And she could come over here. Or no, I mean, she could spend two and come over here and get another point and another ticket. Or she could spend two over here to say, as soon as she does this, right now, her die is yellow. But as soon as she comes here, she could say, no, 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 no. This die is now a different color. For instance, yeah. Yeah. So, let's say Jen, she... Okay. All right. So, this is what Jen's going to do. She drafted a yellow die to learn this yellow trick. 
Then, because she can activate, she will spend one to activate this, which gives her two points because there have been two blue drafted dice. And now, she will spend two over here to say, this is no longer a yellow die. This is now a red die. And, um, oh wait, oh shoot! I was going to say, then she could come over here, but she can't. She's already done her main action, which was getting the card. No, she's, okay, so she doesn't need to do that. So no, instead, she's just going to come over here and get another point and another ticket. And then she's got one left over, which um, she could have used at the beginning of the turn to re-roll, but she didn't, so she's done. All right, so now she can put on a performance in either of these towns. But, um, you know, yeah, so she'll probably go to Istanbul if this yellow die is still available. But even if this yellow die is not available and she wants to go to Istanbul, she can draft a blue die and then turn it yellow. So Jen now has that flexibility to put on that full performance, that uh, full tour over there. So that was her turn. Move on to um, the next, and uh, Jen is going to go first. All righty. Well, I think Jen is now going to... Ooh! All right, Jen's going to draft a blue. All righty. Is she? No, 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 no. No, no, Jen is going to draft a yellow. All right, so... She's drafting a yellow, and this says, hey, you can put on a performance in a yellow city, or she could lock in any of these in-game bonuses. Jen's going to put on a performance in Istanbul, which uh, says uh, she needed a yellow die, which she had. She gets eight points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hoorah. And um, she can now activate these again because she got another yellow die. She'll do the same thing. She'll activate this, which gives her two points because there's two blue. She will activate this, which gets her another ticket. So she's got more she could do, and she's going to need these tickets. And she's still got one. It's not enough to change the color of the die, etc. So here's the other thing that happens, folks. As soon as you complete a tour and score those points, and you could have done the tour in any order you wanted. And again, you could go diagonally, etc., etc. Could have been here and then away over here, whatever. After a tour is scored, the tickets go back to the supply. So Jen has basically turned all those tickets in to get the eight points, and these three cities are closed for business, for shows, and three new tricks come out. The ca uh, the, the Cabaret de Nao, the, uh, uh, the Casa Daga Propaganda, and Screening the Lady. And all of a sudden, there are three new tricks that we could potentially be learning to add to all the tricks we already know. And that might change things up radically. We both know four tricks. We can both create some nice little chain combos. We both have certain colors we like. Jen really likes yellow. And she likes blue. Um, I like blue a lot. And hey, None of these new ones are blue, so they don't really work well. But I also like green. This would be a green, so I could maybe combo it with different stuff also. Um, but, uh, yeah, that uh, was Jen's turn. And so now it's my turn, and I've got to decide. I get first dibs on these new tricks. And I could draft a yellow, a black, or a green trick. I've still got one more. I need to get another, so I want to put on a, a tour or tour, so I could still get down here into these areas. It might be nice to take a black to come here, so I can get a couple of flares, so I can make these generate more points for me every time I activate them. Because Jen's really, I mean, I could finish this later. I mean, don't forget, I also have these 10 points, because I've spent the time up there also. But what do the new ones do? Okay, so this is a point for every ticket I've earned. So that one's really better for Jen, because she's got this passive ticket generation. Or me, i got to spend a whole turn generating tickets. Oh, this is another one like the one I got at the beginning that lets me generate um, more acclaim automatically. And now acclaim, you know, obviously it lets you do more stuff. But at the end of the game, it's not worth anything unless you lock in this, which is one point per acclaim, a maximum of 10. So you could get 10 points for having 10 acclaim, 10 tickets, or 10 flare if you really focus on an acclaim uh, ticket or a flare generating engine. Uh, if you lock those in. Or you could, you know, lock in mastery of the different sizes or the different types. Or you could keep on putting on more tours. Or you could keep on learning more tricks so that you can create more interesting combo chains in your little magical engine. So, that should give you an idea at this point, folks, of all the kind of stuff you can do in Levitation, Masters of Magic. And if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that I in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.